Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one-stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at one of the LinkedIn blogs which talks about how to build a deep learning based ads CTR prediction model. CTR stands for click-through rate. That is how many clicks and ads will get given depending on the views that it has been exposed to. So it predicts that CTR click-through rate probability. Apart from just predicting the ad CTR, the model also beautifully talks about how these models should be well calibrated, the trade-off between using embedding as a feature versus learning them in a deep uh, learning model while predicting the CTR, what is the, which is better and why. And uh, also the blog talks about how can we better the ROI of the seller, which is return on investment. Seller is paying money to show advertisements, right? Well, how can we also better his ROI by uh, bettering our CTR models and also we will look all of that into details. In LinkedIn, the ad business is powered through click-through rate which is the CTR prediction uh, which is the probability of click between a LinkedIn member and the advertisement. So basically when you are browsing through your LinkedIn feed, in between you will see the advertisement. The uh, How the advertisements are shown, it goes through an auction process. In the auction, definitely the CPC which is cost per click, the amount of money a seller is ready to pay for this advertisement will be a factor but also the CTR of that ads will be a factor because we want to uh, in, uh, ensure that the relevance is there. So it has to, it's a trade off between relevance which is CTR and revenue which is the CPC. So both the factors plays an important role so CTR uh, prediction of CTR is very crucial. In past before uh, this deep learning model they had a GLM mix which is a generalized linear model which was highly optimized and it had lot of feature engineering. It was hard to surpass but later they came up with a deep learning based model which you will see in today's video which has uh, uh, been which has replaced the previous model and after this has been scaled they are seeing 8.5% higher CTR which is they are seeing 8.5% more clicks. Uh, High overview of the architecture is something like this. It has three towers. The neural network or the deep learning model has three towers. The shallow tower, the deep tower and the wide tower. Uh, the three tower model architecture, the shallow and deep tower takes in generalization features. What do we, we mean by generalization features? Generalization feature means uh, the member features, the ad features and the context features. So user features, user will see the ads. What ads? Ads features and context like context like time of the day, day of the week, recent event, any special event today or any upcoming events and member features means the user features, user device, user location, user past history and ad features means ad features like which category the ad belong to, how many interaction it has got so far. So the, these two uh, tower, the shallow tower and deep tower sees this uh, generalization feature. The only difference is shallow tower is a one layer tower with uh, linearity in it while the second tower is a deep tower you can see there are multiple layers there is embedding layer there might be non-linearity and all so uh, deep tower is a uh, deep neural network while shallow tower is a simple one layer linear uh, layer network and also there is a white tower the white tower uh, helps in uh, memorization we will look into that so there are these three towers and the output of all of them is summed together passed through a sigmoid and there is a cross entropy loss which is trained to predict the ctr our deep ctr model has three tower the deep tower the shallow tower and the white tower the output of these towers is summed together to uh, uh, pass through a sigmoid layer via cross entropy loss function to predict the CTR we have already seen and all three towers are unique and have their own challenges and unique goodness they brings. So let's go, go through each tow uh, tower one by one. Now first look, let's look at the deep tower the complete feature interaction. Uh, goodness that it brings the deep tower is a multi-layer perceptron that is it's a feed forward neural network and uh, it includes or it sees generalization features which is the ad features, the member features, the context features uh, and converts them into embedding, concatenates the embedding and pass it through a fully connected layer and produces the output. So it learns generalization features and more interesting features. And they have also talked about there are two ways in which embeddings can be introduced. One is we can uh, train embedding separately and add, is a, add it as a feature or train a deep model which has embedding learned 
in the model itself so the one that they have proposed is the second one they have told the advantage and disadvantage of the trade off between the two in first one it has lower engineering cost because uh, you can simply store the embedding in a key value store and uh, use it while the in the online inferencing while in the second one there is more cost the model becomes bigger as well as uh, the embeddings have to be learned during the training process uh while the approach one has lower engineering cost the approach b works better because it is able to learn the togetherness the complete feature interaction which is enabled by end to end deep model because the embeddings learned are learned in such a way that they optimize for conversion while in the first uh way embeddings can be learned through some way they are added as a feature they are not optimizing for conversion while in the second one the embeddings are learned in a way such that the final output they optimize it for so that's why they went with the second type of model which is a deep network model where the embeddings are learned uh, during the process of predicting the ctr and they have also talked about uh, how did uh, they that they had to do some adjustment to meet the strict latency requirement but they have kept it out of the scope of this blog so we have seen the first tower which is the deep tower the deep towers uh, the idea is that it will have uh, deeper layers it will learn embeddings interesting features it can have non linearity and produce an output the white tower the the third tower which is the white tower this one uh takes in sparse id features when we say id features it means the advertisement id features so basically what happens you can be very uh, creative while create uh, in uh, coming up with features but you can't always come up with all the features so what this id based features does is it's a categorical feature so add may as many advertisers or advertisements are there those many ids will be there so it's a white tower there will be all the ids it, uh, passed as categorical features so for each id it will memorize some properties of it using an embedding right so here it memorizes the id that is in uh, what is that id uh, it will learn its embedding and uh, uh, this tower's importance is that it is able to learn memorize the uh, properties of particular advertiser or advertisement id as well as it brings freshness how it brings freshness because freshness is very important in linkedin kind of environment a job which was posted 20 days back may get obsolete while a job which was just posted today few hours back is very much relevant so freshness is very much important how it brings freshness is uh, the other two networks which is the deep network and the shallow network they are trained on daily basis while the white tower is Uh, trained every hour and how is that possible the other two tower goes through cold start training that is once they are trained we fix the weight and use the output of that along with the white tower uh, in the end fine tune the white tower so it can be explained in this way the other two towers goes through cold start offset which is uh, after they are trained we just fix their coefficient and just use what's the prediction coming out of them but the white tower uh, can come up with uh, the in in the white tower there can be new ids new advertisers new advertisement id so the neural network has to be trained from scratch but it goes through a warm start training they haven't explained a lot but what i understood out of it was warm start training would basically means that uh, the neural network will be trained from scratch every hour but they will use the embeddings of old ids whatever it has learned it will initialize those ids with the past learning and the new ids it will it will learn every hour in that way it's a warm start the initialized embeddings from past learning and which can be fine tuned every hour so new embeddings will be learned and old embeddings will be fine tuned in this way it's a very fast process and it brings the freshness and they have also done some ablation studies ablation studies basically means removal of the white tower if they remove the white tower the performance degrades and addition of white tower brings significant boost to model performance and also retraining frequency every hour brings further improvement to the model so they have done some uh, studies like removing it doing uh, changing the frequency and they have seen that it brings freshness and goodness and improves the accuracy so we have seen that uh, first two towers the fre uh, the deep tower which is a uh, uh, deep neural network which uh, takes generalization features 
and learns embedding and has non-linearity and predicts some output. We have also seen the white tower which has which is ID based and learned ID based goodness and is trained uh, every hour. And there is also one more tower which is the cello tower. The cello tower uh, is there for ease of calibration. What is calibration? Calibration basically means that the probabilities which are coming out are representative of true conversion. So if the probability is 90%, it would basically means if 100 views and advertisement get 90 of them should convert. So the probability is representative of true conversion. I have a video on calibration. I will add the link of that as well in the description section. So let's come to the cello tower. We know that uh, the uh, bid auctioning considers CTR as well as the CPC and the expected cost or expected uh, money the seller has to give is CTR cross CPC. So the CTR has to be very accurate. Now uh, we have seen that if the CTR model uh, is a deep network and we know that if the linear models are well calibrated while the deep learning models or tree based models are not that well calibrated. If they just use the deep tower and the white tower the probability CTR produced are over uh, predicting and they are 40% higher they are over predicting by 40% so they uh, and this can hurt the ROI of the seller right because CTR uh, expected revenue for the seller or expecting expected charge we take from the seller will increase so the CTR has to be accurate to that to control the CTR to make it more accurate they use the cello tower trick and also they could have used calibration but they found when the deep uh, network they are using even after calibration through isotonic regression and logistic regression they were not able to calibrate it well and you can see details of how to do calibration in my video that i will add in the description section coming back so what they did they did a cello tower trick they introduced uh, a linear layer uh, which is just one layer and added that as a cello tower it has just one layer and which is a linear layer and it also sees all the generalization features that the deep tower sees just the difference is that it's just a linear layer and doing this the over prediction reduced now uh, why so they don't have a very uh, theoretical explanation or studies on it but the hypothesis is that linear models are well calibrated and adding addition of this shallow network increases the importance of linear model and whatever the linear model is not able to predict the unpredictability of uh, the linear model or whatever is left over is predicted by the deep tower so the deep uh, tower predicts the residuals and linear layers importance increases and overall we see that CTR uh, uh, improves and as well as its over prediction uh, problem reduces. So uh, they have shown in this chart that previously it was over predicting but now you can see the height it has reduced so over prediction reduced. So that's the Uber uh, concept that how they have added three towers the shallow tower which sees all the generalization features and helps in calibration that is more stable CTR the deep tower learns embedding and uh, learns the residual and learns interesting features so that the CTR is more accurate and the white tower brings uh, freshness and as well as memorizes for new IDs, new advertisers and all three together uh, predicts a better CTR. They have explained few more details about the uh, model that is some of the features which are prone to overfitting and are generalization features are only passed to the cello tower not to the deep tower like the position feature and some more features which are prone to overfitting are just passed to the cello tower so cello tower sees all the generalization features that the deep tower sees plus some extra features which are uh, uh, which will become uh, which may overfit if passed to the uh, deep tower so position feature is only added to the cello tower and what is this position feature position feature is while training they would know that uh, when the ad was on at which position it was on so that position is also added in the model as a feature and it's only added to the shallow tower and uh, after adding the shallow tower they told that 40% over prediction problem reduced to 10% still there is some uh, over prediction 10% and reason of that is the exposure bias and most of the recommendation systems uh, uh, goes through this bias the exposure bias basically says that 
uh, the there are many advertisements and few of them goes through the retrieval layers and get ranked so only few of the advertisements get over exposed that is the exposure bias and that causes this over prediction uh, by 10 percent and the way they have reduced it is instead of calibrating in previous models uh, data they scale the deep learning model to some fraction of users and use this data for the calibration using isotonic regression and post that their over prediction problem almost reduced to zero so calibration should be done on uh, the current models exposed data whatever uh, whatever uh, advertisements the current model is preferring and showing more in the user's feed on that the calibration should happen so the conclusion is that a new ad CTR model is proposed and it combines the deep feature interaction, fast memorization and ease of calibration with the three towers. The first tower helps in deep feature interaction, second tower helps in fast memorization which is the white tower and cello towers helps in ease of calibration. And also they have uh, told the trade off between embedding as a features versus learning embeddings in a deep uh, model and also the hourly frequency training of wide tower helps in better CTR prediction and also in fresh, uh, uh, more freshness uh, angle it brings to the CTR and uh, the over prediction problem can be solved by doing a calibration on current model exposed data. I have also listed down some final takeaways to better the ROI of the seller ads model CTR has to be very accurate as expected revenue from seller is CTR cross CPC which is expected cost per click. The wide, deep and shallow network model architecture, three towers have their own, own importance and uh, they help in deep feature interaction, fast memorization and ease of calibration. Addition of features which are more prone to overfitting should be done to the shallow linear model and uh, shallow or linear tower access regularization. Whenever its importance in the whole architecture increases, it produces more stable PCTR and deep tower uh, may work on top of it to uh, better the uh, better predict the leftover residuals and correct way to calibrate is to calibrate on the model generated data and not on past model generated data which is prone to exposure bias and also the blocks talk about whether embedding should be added as a feature or it should be trained during the process uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of them hope you enjoyed the content please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates bye